Here's a Plain Jane Zenith 5 tube AM radio from 1968. And the reason I know it's from 1968 is because of the model number, which is Y. Now I'll get it where I can see it. Y114C. Now Y is the prefix for the 1968 model year. Now Zenith, like some other companies, was known to use the same design for several model years. So this radio is from the 68 model year, but the chassis number is chassis 5M04. Well, the M means that this chassis was first introduced in 1965. And I actually think there was a Zenith radio made prior to 65 that used this same cabinet. In fact, if you look at the tuning knob, it still retains these civil defense markings, which mostly went away by 64. So this is obviously a set that was a carryover, probably an attempt to use up old tube parts and chassis. So you know, by 68, this was probably an entry-level AM radio. Okay, let's fire it up and see what it does. Give it a few seconds for the tubes to warm up. Sounds like the usual bad filter capacitor hum. stations behind the hum, so after we replace the filter capacitor, it'll probably be okay. Okay, here's the chassis, and this set uses the type knobs that are captive to the cabinet. That's a safety feature, since this is a hot chassis set, meaning it has one side of the AC line connected directly to the chassis. And here's the underside of the radio chassis, fairly minimal construction. And the only capacitor we need to worry about is this filter capacitor can. Everything else is ceramic disc. And we have this couplet here that's in the audio circuit. So let's replace this joker and hopefully this radio will be good to go again. Okay, here we are. Red is 60 microfarad, 150 volt. Green is 20 microfarad, 150 volt, and it appears this is date coded the 240th day of 67. So yeah, this radio was likely made late 67, early 68 for the 68 model year. Okay, and this resistor in the power supply is brown, black, red, which equals a thousand ohms. But we're reading 1.7k ohms, so I think it might be a good idea just to go ahead and replace this resistor while we're in here. Okay, we have our filter capacitors installed in place. We soldered two modern individual capacitors to take the place of this honking thing on a terminal strip, which is soldered to the chassis. And since the chassis is used as circuit ground, I was able to use this lug is our negative tie point. I also soldered our original negative lead from the old filter capacitor here just as an added bit of good measure. Here's our 1k ohm resistor that we replaced and I think we're about ready to give it a try. Okay, there we are, bringing in 84 WHAS. So that tells me this thing is doing fairly well at bringing in distant stations. And here we are reassembled. They had to kind of reposition the filter capacitors a little bit to accommodate the speaker. But everything fits. It is correct. It is absolutely here we are correct. Back together. We measure this every day with a southern bell. Feels so good all the time. Prior to be a young middle class, middle old black guy in America. with anyone anywhere in the world you could share 
your screen so you can review what you're saying. Funky video conferencing. And you probably... And many times, personal being... I thought for the rest of my life I would have to continue having surgeries. But now, everything is changing. Go to www.david.me. Okay, got it. For a lot less money, you can drink Life Change tea that promotes your health and reduces... You know, like they say, the best way to test a radio is to put it back together. If it's going to create a problem, then it'll wait till you have it all back together. As you can hear, with it turned down, we have a good bit of hum in the speaker. And with the volume turned up, we have distortion. That's completely unacceptable. So let's let's pull this apart and check some more things. Okay, we're back apart, and I think we have a gassy audio output tube. And the reason I believe that is because we're getting a positive voltage on the grid, on the control grid of the audio output tube. And the longer it warms up, the higher the voltage gets. We're getting about 5 volts positive on the control grid of the audio output tube. And that should be a negative voltage. It shouldn't be that much positive. Okay, here we are. After more warm-up time, as you can hear, more distortion. And our control grid voltage on the audio output tube has gone up a little bit higher. Generally, that's what happens with these gassy audio output tubes. They'll sound reasonably well at first turn on, and then they warm up and then rear their ugly head. So let's find a good 50C5 and see if that'll cure the problem. And if the tube ends up not being the problem, the trouble will most likely be the internal coupling capacitor inside of this couplet here. They don't go bad much, but it does happen. But First, we're going to replace the tube and see what happens. Okay, here we are back together again with the good tube. And it seems to be playing fine. WMER has you covered with severe weather at once. Broadcasting live from Meridian, Mississippi. Good time, Gospel Radio, 1390 AM, WMER Meridian. WMER. Conversation at Community Bank. Community Bank, like no other bank you know. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Temperatures will slowly climb as the wheat progresses. And notice another thing that went away was that annoying background hum. Yeah, this tube was causing that too. We will we will carry it live for our affiliates around the. So if it's coming in, I'd say this radio is doing about as well as can be expected.
in the state indicted the guy scheming with wildlife and it's the legal limit to make matters worse for her there's a videotape of her being abused okay that ought to do it 1968 zenith and radio and, and all ready to go that. for hopefully anyway, several more decades 45 days in now before i go there's now, one Perry, caution i want to bring up when you're replacing the chassis and speaker back into one of these types of plastic cabinets, do not go crazy over tightening the uh, screws because if you do, you're liable to crack the uh, mounting studs. After this many decades, this plastic tends to become brittle and those studs are very easily cracked. So when tightening those screws, be very careful and only tighten them enough to do the job. Can't tell you how many of these I've seen with busted mounting studs because of the plastic becoming brittle and people over tightening the screws and they and it just cracks the studs. Perry have control over the 7.5 million. Earn your business. Call me, CW Garrett, at 601. Okay, there you go. Thanks for watching, and more to come later.